Hey there geographers and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're going to be looking at unit 5, topic 10. We're going to be talking about the consequences of agricultural practices. Throughout this video we're going to be analyzing a bunch of different agricultural practices and looking at how they negatively impact their environment. Since the Greed Revolution, countries around the world have shifted how they produce their food. We now see a reliance on different chemical fertilizers, pesticides, and herbicides. We have a new focus on trying to grow our livestock as large as possible and as quickly as as possible. This has led to countries to start to use confined animal feedlots, which has in turn led to a high concentration of manure. The use of antibiotics, genetic modification of different organisms, and the use of growth hormones, which has allowed us to produce more food than ever before, but has also led to more water pollution, air pollution, and health concerns over the quality of the food we are producing. And as more countries around the world continue to develop, we see a greater demand for meat and specialty crops. All of this has led to our agricultural lands to expand, which has negatively impact our soil, water, and air. In parts of Africa, North America, Central America, Southwest Asia, parts of South America, the Middle East, and Eastern Europe, we are seeing desertification continue to become a growing problem. Desertification is when arable land deteriorates and becomes part of the desert. This is often induced by different human activities. For example, in the Middle East and parts of Africa, we can see pastoral nomads who allow their animals to graze on the land. Oftentimes, they end up overgrazing and remove key vegetation that prevents the desert from expanding. In the rainforest and other heavily wooded areas, we can see the impact of deforestation, where the forests are being cut down and sold for lumber. Many countries, especially developing countries, remove their forests and rainforests in order to generate more profit and trade with other countries. They'll also remove the forest to create farmland or make room for different settlements. If we change our scale and talk about communities that use slash and burn agriculture, we still see the impact of deforestation. These communities often tear down parts of the rainforest or forest and then burn the fields. This puts nutrients into the soil, which allows them to get a better harvest. However, it also puts more CO2 into the atmosphere, and it destroys these unique ecosystems. Other parts of the world are struggling with soil salinization, which is an excessive amount of salt that accumulates in the soil, killing the plant roots and making it difficult for plants to grow. These areas will often see more water runoff, which will lead to soil erosion. All of this reduces the amount of arable land, and it allows for more water pollution to get into the rivers, lakes, and oceans. In Southeast Asia, we can see terraced farming, which is built into the sides of hills. This type of agriculture is like steps on the side of a mountain or hill with rainwater running down the steps, irrigating the crop. This type of agriculture is very labor intensive to create and is utilized in areas that need to maximize their arable land to feed their population. But in doing so, they also transform their natural landscape and increase the chance of mudslides. Now throughout the world, we can see societies use irrigation. This is when we move water from one place to another. The goal here is to make sure that your crops always have access to fresh water. This allows us to plant crops in geographic areas that traditionally do not have access to water. This can be great for producing more crops, but it can also deplete fresh water sources from other areas and lead to an increase in water pollution as some of the fertilizers, pesticides, and herbicides from the crops may get into the water and run off into the local water sources. On the other hand, we could look at areas that are too wet, such as the wetlands. Here we can see societies draining the wetlands in order to build settlements on them and also agricultural lands. This destroys unique ecosystems and it also hurts our rivers, lakes, lakes and oceans. The wetlands act as a natural filter system. When it rains and there's water runoff, the wetlands traditionally filter that out. By destroying those, we're seeing more pollution get into our rivers, lakes, and oceans. And it's no secret that our population around the world continues to grow and more countries continue to advance economically. We'll continue to see an increase in demand for food. More people will want to eat more meat and other luxury foods, which will further environmental burdens on local ecosystems systems as we continue to push the boundaries of our production. Now it's not all doom and gloom here. Countries around the world are doing a lot to protect their natural environments. From restoring the wetlands to protecting the rainforests, replanting trees, creating policies like the Clean Air and Water Act, and regulating the use of chemicals and antibiotics in agricultural production. We also have seen a new demand from consumers for more free-range food.
food, organic food, fair trade food, healthy food, and more consumers around the world are starting to look for companies that are using environmentally safe practices. All right, geographers, we went over a ton of concepts in this review video. Now comes the time to practice. Answer the quiz questions on the screen right now and check your answers in the comments below. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing. It's free, you can always change your mind later. This way you'll get notified when I post new videos and it helps me make more videos in the future. And if you are struggling with your AP Human Geography class and need a little bit more help, consider checking out my Ultimate Review Packet. It is a great resource that covers all seven units of AP Human Geography, and it'll definitely help you get an A in your class and a five on that national exam. All right, geographers, that's all the time I got for today. I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you guys online.